All right. So allow me to, we got more people in here. So allow me to go over my, my previous thoughts real quick and then add in uh, what happened here. So this particular live stream, this attempt from Mark Fernandez in order to try to talk video strategy for, uh, for, for Collider um, failed. Epically, epically, epically failed. There's no better way to describe it. This is one of the worst PR decisions I have ever seen, ever. And I say that because this was what should have been a very simple, simple thing. You come out, you say, over the course of the past couple of days, there has been a lot of changes to Collider. Uh, a lot of you out there have voiced your discontent over this. We would like to explain why this happened. And then be honest, just say the views weren't there to back the cost. The cost for everything we were doing, spreading ourselves too thin, which he effectively says in this thing anyway, uh, was basically so, 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 so bad that we had to shut it all down. Our problem, though, was we didn't do it the right way. We didn't do it by giving these people time and notice down uh, earlier on. We wanted them to make sure they had the holidays in order to, you know, to enjoy their time thinking that they had a, that they had a job to come back to thinking that they had a, that they had anything to come back to. Uh, but of course, two days uh, or uh, the day after the new year, uh, we're going to, we're going to let them go. We're going to let them go. And then of course, you know, you could explain that in a non, <laughs> in a non cynical way. And people I think would understand the money wasn't there. The views weren't there. We had to make some very abrupt changes business. People understand it. The way that it was put out there in that press release sounded terrible. The fact that rule of two was omitted from that right away because he didn't think that it was a big enough show shows you that he, in essence, is still kind of protecting his ego. This is the first half of this particular thing was about him kind of like just trying to be open and then going through the list of all the employees and saying this is exactly who they are and what they've done and how great they are. And then he started crying, which I'm not going to fault the guy for crying at all. And after the cry. Then he comes back and he kind of like, if you notice, he kind of hit the ground like a little bit like bullish, you know, he, he, he was like, oh, I can't show emotion. I got, I got to be, I got to be brute honest here. I got to do all these things. Uh, so, you know, this is, oh my God, uh, to, to quote, to quote second street Marvel here, this is pointless. It is, uh, it, it really, really, really is. Eddie P here says this wasn't progression. It was regression. A hundred percent, uh, a hundred percent. All he had to do was explain why things happen the way that they happen. We can read between the lines because we're not stupid. The people watching this are not dumb. They're not stupid. They get it entirely. When you look at, at this situation and you, you look at Mark Fernandez and how he explained everything, all he had to say was the money isn't there. And then the situation with Jack Hind and, and look, I was making memes during this. For those of you who are just popping in, I was making some memes while this whole thing was going down because when it came to Jack. Jack was the person that everybody wanted to like, kind of be like the whipping boy, right? To be the sacrificial lamb, so to speak, that this would help go a long way into making sure people were happy with where Collider was going. If they fired Jack, I, I didn't want him to be fired. He definitely says some dumb things. Mark did say he did some dumb things, but when it came to the disciplinary action, which by the way, did not include a public apology from either party, right? Which I thought was kind of weird. Uh, he, he said he was going to keep it private, that he wasn't going to talk about it. So I, I whipped this little, this little ditty up here, this little, this little image. Cause this is what it feels like. This, this is what it feels like. Oh, he's just, he's his good little boy. He's just not, not the number two apparently, but just, just a good little boy, just a good little boy. Didn't do nothing. And then you've got, uh, this one right here. I just thought that was kind of funny. Uh, because that is that, that's where it's at. That's just, uh, that, that's what's going on here. We have the situation where Mark Fernandez. <laughs> Uh, protected Jack and, and I get it. He's protecting his employee. I understand that. Right. He, he called him out, said he, what he did was stupid and idiotic, but not even a public apology. That's, that's the thing that that's the biggest problem here is it's, it's almost like he's not condemning it, not necessarily condoning it, but he is okay with what he said because Jack was effectively defending the company. And since ego is playing a large part here, because effectively Mark Fernandez has to hear eat crow in regards to everything, right? He has to admit failure, having somebody come out and vehemently take the wrath of the internet in order to defend the company. You're going to protect it. I get where he's coming from, but the PR thing would be utterly, utterly to make sure that, uh, that, that he says, I'm sorry, publicly in a Twitter post in a video a Tumblr blog, perhaps anything to just say that he screwed up and that he's sorry. And he didn't mean to offend, but no, we didn't get that. What we got were excuses, a lot of excuses, 
and it doesn't take a genius to figure out where YouTube sits or where, where the YouTube business for something like this. When I used to live in LA, this was in 2010 to 2000, the, the, the end of 2012 uh, viral videos were all the rage. Uh, YouTube was just coming into its own prominently. That's where I found YouTube. And a lot of these companies were starting to get into video and they were all doing different things. And everyone was trying to make a lot of money. Everyone was trying to do it all uh, as cheap as humanly possible. But there were a lot of companies that were starting to invest into studio space and to buying the gear and everything else. And as a result of that, but this is what Mark did. And under Campia, they were, you know, like with Complex, they were building it up. They were building it up. We know that they were building it up to something that was major. And then when Campia left, Mark couldn't maintain the level of, 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 of trajectory that Campia had put them on. Campia could run all of this. He wanted to run the ESPN of movie commentary and Mark didn't. Mark was trying to ride a trend. That's uh, that's all it is. If you listen to what he says, even the deep fake stuff effectively is a trend. The VR stuff is effectively a trend. It's wherever they can find a trend. It's wherever they can find anything like that. It's wherever they can find anything in regards to riding that wave. And it's not going to work. It's not going to work at all. It's the stupidest thing they could do. Uh, and yet here we are. Here we are in the situation where they have effectively killed their brand. He killed it in this, in the last hour and a half. He has basically killed his brand. He has basically said, uh, that, uh, that they don't know what they're doing. And now they're moving into emerging technology. He tried to, what he tried to compare himself to George Lucas, right? Tried citing Lucas as inspiration. Well, Lucas likes to always, you know, be on the emerging forefront of technology. Yeah, he did. And we got the prequels. And, 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 you know, and I respect Lucas for that, but Lucas is not, Fernandez is not Lucas because in this situation, it's like, instead of explaining it in a way that doesn't come across, like you're trying to protect your ego because you showed a moment of weakness, which is exactly what it was. It's just this absolute mess of a situation. And the deep fake stuff is already starting to show its age. And as I, as I pointed out before, I just want to share this one with you guys. I made this image while they were talking, because this is what it feels like it's going to do. He kept bringing up John Schnepp, like Schnepp is, uh, is, is, you know, going to end up being a deep fake as a way to keep Collider relevant, to go back to the nostalgia age of Collider. This whole thing's a dumpster fire. It was an exhausting dumpster fire. Nothing was really said. Everything was read between the lines. And it was just like, oh, look at me. I'm the victim. That's a lot of it. Look at me. I'm the victim. Look at me. I'm the victim. Look at me. I'm the victim. Mark made some bad choices in business. That's fine. I don't fault him for that. I fault him for not having the courage to tell his staff of which he spent the first 35 minutes or so completely, you know, giving hand jobs to that they, the time was almost up and maybe he tried for the right reason to do it, to not ruin the holidays, but then to not make Jack apologize publicly and to hold that to the chest that just, it just ruins it. And then to go through and to every, everything, it was bad. I mean, it was so bad. You know, when I, when I made the, the thumbnail for this video, this was the, the first, the first image that came to mind when I was going to do this live stream was uh was was taking the George Bush mission accomplished image from from the Iraq war and having and then I just put Jack's <laughs> Mark's face on there and this was going to be the original thumbnail now after and then I wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt so I so I made it the the Gettysburg address I brought up the Gettysburg address and that was the one that I chose uh having a little bit of fun with but I wanted it to be that you know, I, I chose this. So I thought it'd be kind of funnier given, given the benefit of the doubt, right? Like, you know, he's going to, he's going to try to unite people. He's going to, he's going to maybe fall on a sword a little bit. He's going to be out there, be a better person. Uh, no flat out it's mission accomplished. And if you know anything about George W. Bush's past, you know, that it, that entirely means that the mission wasn't accomplished and the whole thing's gone to shit sense. So when I look at Collider, when I think about Collider, when I think about this website, when I think about this, this video entity, when I think about everything they've accomplished, it's now gone under Mark Fernandez. It's, it's absolutely gone under Mark Fernandez, and that is just where we find ourselves. So 
Collider, my prediction, it's going to be sold off in about uh, six, seven months. And um, Collider video is going to be gone. And everyone else has their YouTube channels and he made sure to tell you, uh, tell you about that, but he also didn't link to them. That's quite telling as well. Anyway, oh, what a mess.